If you like these songs, my mom sings. Thank you, Kathy. Welcome, everybody, this morning to our worship service. As you probably noticed, I'm not Pastor Ashley. <laughs> Michael Reardon filling in. Pastor Ashley's down in Selden, preaching down there. He's probably about a third of the way through right now. But <laughs> just kidding, maybe. But we have our announcements this morning. At first, I'd like to welcome you if you're visiting. And I would encourage you to tear off that little thank you for visiting strip in your handout here and fill that out with your name and address and we'll send you a, a thank, thank you note for visiting and encouragement from us. So just tear that off, fill it out, put it in, your offer, put it in the offering plate when it comes around. It would be greatly appreciated. And there's some announcements in there. And I have one announcement that was handed to me saying the September-October broadcast will be coming out soon. If you have any meeting or activity or events planned for September or October, please contact Ann Barnes or the church office with that information or email it to Ann or the off church office. And we'd like that in by Friday or Sunday at the latest. So please get those in. Now, where's Mary? There's Mary. <laughs> she has an announcement. <laughs> we have a microphone for Mary. Okay. Um, I wanted to give you um, a report on yesterday's twice around sale and crafts and bake sale. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone who provided and donated either something for the Twice Around sale or some crafts or food and prayers as well. And um, we did $1,020. <laughs> and I got to say, it felt like it. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I was, sh I was shocked because normally when we do it during the holiday fair, you know, we, may, we might do at the most maybe 350 or 400. So I was amazed. And I've got to tell you, if you don't think nickels and dimes and those things add up, because most everything that went wasn't much more than a dollar or two. And it was, it was just amazing. So um, 
Thank you all again. I also want to just say in the back room are a few bake sales goods left. If you'd like to leave a little donation, um, there aren't many um, of the goodies. But downstairs, there are still many things left. And if you like to go and browse or if you weren't here or maybe it might be something you've heard a neighbor or someone say, oh, I could use that for my camp or whatever, please do. Um, and you can leave a donation or see me about that. And then also I wanted to just say that I think there was some misunderstanding. A few people have come to me and said, oh, so we don't do the holiday fair. Wrong. We are, but we will just not be doing the twice around part of it. That was why we kind of wanted to do that this summer to lighten the load in, at the holidays. So we will have our breakfast and our craft fairs, and we'll start making those nice crafts and our bake sales. So again, thank you all. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for that, Carol. Oops. Get that mic again. It was on the inter <laughs> internet needs you. <laughs> I'd just like to thank everybody who helped, especially Mary for all her hard work, and Louise, where, there's Louise. She was super, but thanks to all who helped and all who gave. Thank you mu very much again. <coughs> thank you, Carol. Thank you, Mary. Oh, God. Uh, let's see. Does anybody else have an announcement they need to make? No? Okay, let's turn to our hymn book. So I'll grab one. To page 375. 375. Jesus calls us. Let us stand as we sing. Lord, Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we thank you for bringing us together this morning to worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. Lord, we just pray just clear those, that clutter from our minds, those daily worries and fears and troubles for a brief moment, Lord, and open our hearts to your word and help, your, help us, Lord, to focus on you and all that you've done and all that you continue to do in our lives and through our lives. Lord, help us to be open to you and your lead. Help us to follow you each and every day, putting our trust and our faith in you. For you alone are the true living God. We praise you and thank you for life itself. Thank you for loving and caring us, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for being so faithful and meeting, ever, meeting our every genuine need. Oh, Lord, we just pray 
that your Holy Spirit will just flow through us this morning. Open our hearts to worship you as we ought to. We praise you and thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for teaching us how to pray by giving us the model prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Craig. Uh, will the children come up, please? Let's start off like we always do. What happened to you this week that excited you that you'd like to share with people here this morning? Things that you did this week that were really exciting for you. I'm going to be playing this morning in church. Isn't that a blessing? Yes. How about you? Mm. What did you do? We almost had everything shared for Father's Day. sleeping all in the tent on the porch with my dad. I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse, <laughs> but you're dead. Oh, that's great. Camping is a great thing. You were on Prince Edward Island, too. That's one of our favorites, Camp Town. Well, listen, this morning, I've got something for you that I would like you to try to tell me what you think it is. It's been in the church here for years and has been kind of taken out of circulation um, because we're remodeling some things in the church. But many of you will recognize this uh, picture. I'm going to ask the children this morning if they can tell me what this is. Jesus, okay. Okay, what's he doing? What's he doing? What's it is? That's us, the world. Okay? And here's his hands this morning. We're going to kind of have a little song regarding hands. And... Um, what, what can we do because of what Jesus has done for us to give us eternal life when he died on the cross? What can we do to be his hands? Praise him and thank him and do what he asks us to do. What does he, ask, what does he ask us to do, Beth? To trust in him and call on him and let him have his way in our lives. He says, first of all, love me with all your heart and soul, mind, and love and neighbor as thyself, right? So when you look at the hands of Jesus, you think, well, Jesus is asking us to go out and to love our neighbors and do things to our neighbors that are good, and he's also telling us to spread the word. Now, if you're part of your journey in your learning about Jesus, you are not, you cannot go out and, and tell everybody about Jesus except to say, uh, hey, I, I, I'm a classmate, and I would like to come to church. Would you come with me? That would be nice if you invited some, some of your friends to come. Don't feel embarrassed to not do that because many children are looking for this in your friends. And I don't think you'll run into any problems if they do not have a church affiliation. So you can do that. But also remember the hands do represent Jesus. You're, his, you're doing being an extension of Jesus. You're going to be doing things that he calls us to do and because of the great sacrifice he made. So let's remember that. This week again, you know, like where have you been a blessing to somebody else? Try to think of that and do something this week where you are a blessing to somebody else. Okay? Now we're going to sing a little ditty. Get Carolyn up here. Well, this uh, came about yesterday when we were at the um, craft fair. 
Okay. Give me one sec, Craig. This is a very, very uh, uh, song that we all know very well, so you, we don't even need, but you can see it up here over the screen. Okay? Hmm? Very original song. Yeah, right. Ben, ben uh, let, let's get Ben over here okay, with the mic by me. That's it. Be it yeah, exactly. You want me to start everything? No. <laughs> I'm ready to sing. <laughs> this is what you call practice. <laughs> <laughs> He's got, got the whole world in his hands. He's 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 got the little bitty baby. In his hands, he's got the little bitty baby. In his hands, he's got the little bitty baby. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Well Thank done. You. Well done, Thank everybody. You. Now it's time for prayers, blessings, and concerns. It's a big list of uh, prayer requests this morning. We have uh, lift up prayers. Remember Barbara Carpenter and her family with the passing of Bob this past week. And prayers for the family of uh, Lynn Hammer Tucker, who passed away unexpectedly, cousin of Rue's family. Is there any concerns we need to mention this morning? Anybody have any new concerns? Emily? I have two, just to say it. First of all, I asked Lindsay Olga about two rabbis that come to stay with me. They came to stay with me with our son, our daughter at Rabbi Park. Oh. Really. Quite the soul. Mm -hmm. He passed very devastatingly to so many families. Mm -hmm. So this is a prayer for him. Prayers for Ella, Josh, and Kevin Nickerson. Anyone else? Okay. Okay, Lord Ruthman. Okay, prayers for Jesse and Angel and family as they travel to Texas, is it? Going to Texas. Prayers for them. The whole family's got a big blessing for them. Yes, they have. Yeah. We'll miss you. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we thank you for the joys that you bring into our lives. And thank you, Lord for listening to our concerns, which seem so many at times. We thank you that you do care, and you do want to hear 
from your children. Lord, we pray for Ella. We uplift her, give her comfort and strength, Lord, and healing as well. Lord, we pray for Josh. We uplift him to you, Lord, for the tests that are coming. And we just pray that you just touch him and give him comfort and strength and courage. Lord, we pray for Kevin Nickerson. We uplift him to you, Lord, and his family. We just pray, Lord, your special touch be upon him and his wife. Lord, we just thank you for the great blessings of healing and Marcy being in remission. We thank you, Lord. And we just thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you that we can turn to you in those times of crisis, in those times of despair. Lord, we just uplift Jesse and Angel and their children, Lord, Jackie and Abby and Ke or, uh, Kyle. We uplift each one to you as they travel to Texas. We just pray for their journey. We thank you for the time we've had to share with them and that they added something so great to our church and we they will be missed. We thank you, Lord, for working in their lives and we just pray you continue to work in their lives and strengthen them on their new journey. And we just thank you, Lord, and we just uplift the family of Bob Carpenter, we pray for Barbara, Lord, and their family during this time of sorrow. We just pray you touch them with comfort and strength. Lord, we pray for the Hammer and Tucker family, Lord, for comfort and strength as well. Lord, we just pray you touch each one on our prayer list. The list is so great, and the need is so great. But we thank you, Lord, that you know each one's needs. And we just also pray for those concerns that we haven't voiced this morning, but they're there on our very hearts and our very minds at this moment. We uplift them to you as well. We thank you, Lord, for listening to our request. And thank you for answering our prayers according to your will. We praise you and thank you, Lord. Bless us now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now it's time as we take our tithes and offerings. The ushers, please come up.
Almighty God, we just come before you with our tithes and offerings, Lord, and we just uplift them to you. We just ask that you touch them and bless them, Lord, multiply them to furtherance of your kingdom. We praise you and thank you, Lord. Pray you bless the giver, Lord, and all those who pray for the ministry. And we just ask that you just use these funds to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout this community and throughout this world, Lord, to those who so badly need to know who Jesus is and what he can do. We thank you and praise you, Lord. Bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may welcome and greet one another. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Mike. I didn't know you were a teacher. Somebody said Bob, or not Bob, but Bob. Uh, when we had filled in. Gary? She was? Oh, she didn't? So, yeah. Oh, she's got to do two more. Oh, I got you. I got you. Morning. Morning.
Thank you, Raleen and Scott. And thank you, Ben and Raleen earlier. Very good. Thank you. I think I need my paper. <clears throat> Sermon title today is Following Jesus, based on Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. We live in very interesting times, to say the least. Things seem to be changing in our nation and our world very fast, even at an alarming rate. The news seems to be bleaker each and every day. Times are changing, that's for sure, and not necessarily in a good way in some aspects. It would seem that people are trying to distance, distance themselves from God, the true living God, and they seem to want to cling to their sinfulness and their wickedness. And it seems like they want to tell everybody that they're a sinner, <laughs> it would seem. A few weeks ago, I was at work putting up some canned goods at the grocery store I work at, and a woman came up the aisle. The news was on the radio about another shooting that took place in our country. And that woman looked at me and said, what in the world is going on with people nowadays? So I answered her something to the effect, well, people are hurting and they're angry and they're lost and they need Jesus. There indeed is an emptiness in people's hearts and their lives. They long and strive to fill that void deep in their hearts and lives, but they reach for the wrong things. They end up reaching for drugs. They reach out to alcohol, trying to quench the pain. They try to fill the void with immoral behaviors and other sinful lifestyle choices. Those things won't fill the void and the emptiness in a person's life. It won't fill the void that a person has in his heart or her heart. Those sinful choices may seem fun and thrilling at the beginning, but the more a person chases after these sinful desires and choices, the darker things will indeed get. The more a nation pulls away from God, the worse things will get. Wickedness will increase. There needs to be a call of repentance in our country, in our world today. People need the Lord Jesus Christ in their lives. And we need a revival in the body of Christ in the church today. People need to hear the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Jesus can change a heart that's so hardened, so sinful, and turn it into a heart that loves him and has a great love for others. God is good. He is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. So where does that leave us? Well, for us, you and I who are believers in Christ, we must know whom we are following. Are we following the world's desires, you know, the way the world wants to shape us, or are we going to follow Jesus? The scripture reading today, as I mentioned, is Luke chapter 5, 1 through 11. You may read along in your Bible as I read it to you. It starts out, one day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats, left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. 
So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything, and followed him. As we start reading Luke chapter 5, we find Jesus standing by the lake of Gennesaret. This lake is also known as the Sea of Galilee, a name that you and I are more familiar with. Luke is the only one that calls it the Lake of Gennesaret. John calls it the Sea of Tiberias a couple times in the Gospel of John. As we usually see in the Gospels, there was a crowd around Jesus. He always drew a crowd. People always came to Jesus to hear him speak, at least, not necessarily put their faith in him. But people flocked to him from all over to hear his teaching and to be healed by him to get something from him as well. The people were listening to the word of God as Jesus was speaking. They were hungering to hear God's word. Are you and I today hungering to hear God's word? I hope we are. I hope you are. We need more of God's word in our life. Sometimes we get so distracted by daily lives and daily happenings. We give more time to our Facebook posts than we do of reading the, the Bible, God's Word. We as followers should be feeding on God's Word each and every day. And we do that by reading, of course, and thinking on the Bible and meditating, as they call it, thinking a verse over and over again. And even asking God to help us to understand what he's saying through his word. Even memorizing scripture can be helpful to us, be beneficial, beneficial to us as in our walk with Christ. While Jesus was standing there teaching the people the word of God, and they were enclosing on him, they're coming up towards him, he saw the two boats at the water's edge. They had been left there by the fishermen who were, who were currently washing their nets. After a long night of fishing with no success, Jesus climbed into one of the boats, the boat that belonged to Simon, whom we also know as Peter. Jesus asked Simon to take his boat out a little from shore. He did this so the people could hear him better and they could see him better as they lined up on shore. And Jesus taught the people from that boat, Simon's boat, and the people listened to what Jesus had to say. That's a very important lesson for you and I today. We too must be good listeners to God's word. That is very important. And not just listeners, but doers of the word as well. When Jesus finished speaking to the people, he turned to Simon, Peter, and said to him, Put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon was kind of shocked at this request. He replied, Master, don't you know we've worked hard all night and we didn't catch anything? But because you say so, I'll let down the nets. How often do we as followers of Christ try to do things in our own power, in our own strength? And we end up not producing the fruit or producing the benefits that we aim to do or come up with. We must allow Jesus to work in us and through us. And he will work in us and through us, through his Holy Spirit that we believers have when we come to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We must allow the Holy Spirit to guide us and to empower us to do the work 
that he has called us to do. We can't do it on our we cannot do it on our own. Even speaking can be difficult on our own. But we need Jesus to lead us and guide us. Simon let down his nets as Jesus told them to. And they ended up catching a large number of fish. The catch was so large that the nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners to help them. And as they loaded on the that catch of fish on the both boats, the boat started to sink as they were trying to bring it to shore. Simon was obedient to what Jesus wanted him to do. Just think what it would be like if we Christians were totally obedient to Christ and allowed the Holy Spirit to witness through us and to work through us in our communities and our world today. What an impact the church would have for Christ if we just allowed him to work through us, to work in us in this increasingly darkening age in which we live, if we just allow him to have his way and will in our lives and to allow the Holy Spirit to use us for his glory and honor and praise. When Simon Peter saw the large number of fish that were caught, he fell to his knees before Jesus. And he said, go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. It reminds me of that time in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, when Isaiah is in the presence of the king of hosts in the throne room of God. And Isaiah says, Woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips, amongst the people of unclean lips, and I've seen the king of hosts. Peter knew who Jesus was at that very moment. Simon Peter humbled himself before the Lord Jesus. Simon recognized his sinfulness and his need for Jesus. Do you recognize your sinfulness? and your need for Jesus Christ. Maybe you're sitting here in church today visiting, or maybe you're listening over the internet, and you're being convicted by the Holy Spirit for your need for Jesus Christ. Confess your sin to Jesus right now, wherever you are. Invite him in to your lives and praise him and tell him and tell others what Jesus has done for you. Jesus will never fail you. Jesus looked at Simon Peter and said, don't be afraid, from now on you will catch men. The fishermen pulled up their boats on the shore and left everything and followed Jesus. The fishermen would become fishers of men. The church has a mission. Jesus tells us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations, making disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We may say to ourselves, wow, that's a big task. That's a big undertaking and a lot of work. We can't do it on our own power and our own strength. And you know what? In our own strength, in our own power, in our own resources, we can't do anything. We are weak in our own strength. I'm the weakest man I know of, and I can't do anything on my own. I need the Holy Spirit to empower me and strengthen me and use me, hopefully to point people to a relationship with Jesus Christ. We must give God all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. The people of this world are trapped and lies. They're trapped by addiction. They're trapped by sinful lifestyle choices. People need Jesus. Are you trusting in Jesus Christ this morning as your Lord and Savior? If you're a believer, I would encourage you to keep following Jesus. Keep running the race of faith. Draw near to the Lord, and he'll draw near to you. Allow the Holy Spirit to live through you in every area of your life. Let's not follow the world's wickedness. 
Let's follow Jesus wherever he may lead, whatever he would have us to do. For he will empower us to do whatever he tells us to do. He will provide a way. He'll make a way. May we be able to say, wherever Jesus leads me, I will follow. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, it says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. In order to follow Jesus, we must know who he is. Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. Jesus is Lord. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life. He suffered and died on a cruel Roman cross for our sins, for mine, for yours, for the whole world. Then he ascended, then he died on the cross, and he ascended on the third day, and he's at the right hand of the Father. And one day, perhaps soon, Jesus will return. The Bible tells us in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We must come to Jesus humbly, repenting of our sins and trusting in his finished work on the cross and nothing else. We must then live our lives for Jesus each and every day. We must trust him each step of the way. No, following Jesus won't be easy. That's for sure. In fact, as our world and nation plummet deeper into wickedness and immoral behavior, deeper into sin, distancing themselves from the living God, things will get worse. We as followers of Christ have a target on our back. And it's not going to get any better for us. It will indeed get worse unless God interjects. That is why it's so vital for us to know to whom we belong and to who we are following. Are we following the world system and the way of the world that is bent on evil and wickedness leading to destruction? Are we going to follow Jesus, who is the true living hope of this world? I can't answer for you, but I choose to follow Jesus Christ. I hope you do as well. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love and your message. Lord, help us to be followers of you, Lord Jesus putting our faith and trust in you for salvation and also to lead us and guide us through this world in which we live today. For you, Lord Jesus, are our true hope. You're our only hope. And we're so thankful we can call on the name of Jesus anytime, anywhere. We thank you, Lord, for your provisions. Thank you for your love and your amazing grace. We're nothing without you, Lord. We need you in our lives. Live through us, Lord. Lead us and guide us. Glorify your name through our lives. Give us strength and courage, Lord, to live for you, no matter what comes our way, no matter what persecution or hardships may come. We will set our focus on you, our author and finisher of our faith. Bless us now, we pray. In the name that's above every name, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now if you'll turn in your hymn books to page 376, we'll sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. Let us stand as we sing.
us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we thank you for this morning's worship service. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your faithfulness. Lord, we just ask for strength and guidance in this week ahead. And we just pray, Lord, you just open our hearts to you in a deeper and greater way. We praise you and we uplift all those mentioned, Lord, with our concerns and prayers. And we just pray you bless us now as we go our own ways. And we just pray our focus will be on you, Lord, each and every day. Help us, Lord, to be faithful followers of you, Lord Jesus. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 